Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to the party. I thank you for deciding to come down from heaven to be a baby. Today I celebrate you being the best present that anyone could ever receive. Thank you for giving me the Bible where my family and I learn more about you. This year, Jesus, would you help me have more faith in you and show others that they can trust you too. Peace out, G-Money. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to earth and coming into my life. Your coming has helped me know that I can have a personal relationship with God. Today I celebrate your birthday by singing to you and spending time with my family. Each year at Christmas time, I enjoy reading Advent scriptures and praying as a family. Even though my dad is either yelling at us because our prayers are too short or not sincere, or he is making us laugh because Gavin is peeking during the prayer. This year, help me become more like you and show others who you are. Your Princess Brookie G. Dear Jesus, thank you for inviting me to the party. Your invitation has made me into a new person and Christ follower. Today I celebrate not only you coming as a baby to Mary and Joseph, but also you coming into my life as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for giving me a family that shows me the truths of the Bible that you came to teach. Help me to be your light in my world this year, your boy, Ben. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and awakening my soul more than 20 years ago. Thank you for my desire to trust you no matter what my present circumstance or what people may say. Thank you for a family who loves and serves you. You have never failed me or them yet and I am forever grateful. Today, I cherish your birthday as a reminder to what you birthed in me when I said yes to you many years ago. Jesus, this year, I want to step out in ways for you like never before. Help me to walk where you lead and to never fear. Love, Susie. Dear Jesus, thank you for entering not only this world on that first Christmas, but for also choosing to enter my world in life. Your coming changes everything. Your coming extends to me love, forgiveness, and grace that I do not otherwise deserve or would have been offered. My family and I celebrate today by offering our lives in sacrifice and praise to you. You, Jesus, my rescuer and leader, are do all I can bring. My life, my talents, my resources, my devotion. Help my family and I to build your kingdom in all we say and do this year. Thank you for coming to the party. So for the month of December, we've been having a series of messages called Come to the Party. And uh, this morning we had the party. We had the party, we had the party, and you can, many of you can still see the remnants of the party on the ground, and, uh, and even I got my shoes still on. I'm retiring them after this service, my party shoes. I know, I'm going to auction them off to the highest bidder after the service tonight. Yeah, I'll sign them first. Um, and so you won't see them again. Uh, so you still see all these remnants, um, but, but you know, the, the party's certainly not over. Uh, the, as the young lady told me this morning, that the party really is until tomorrow, right? Um, but I wanted to take a minute and talk a little bit about the party being over even before it starts. I want to talk a little bit about the phases of Christmas because really there's a lot of, there's really three phases to Christmas and, and a lot of attention is on the first two and I want to talk actually and emphasize the third one. But the first one uh, is into Christmas, right? Right after uh, Thanksgiving, they, they, people begin to put the holiday decorations up and the lights and the, the gifts and the things, the toys go on 
um, sale. And, and so we, we get this into Christmas thing, right? We, we go in into Christmas and we know how to plan for it. And, and Brooke Hills did an amazing job this year planning for Christmas. And the, the creative team did an amazing job. And, and the lobby looks beautiful. And, and we put together a whole series of messages coming into Christmas or into the party. And, and then the second phase of Christmas is, is through Christmas, right? It's, it's tonight. It's tomorrow. Maybe if you have a big family, it might be Tuesday. And, and so we understand that, right? We understand how we go through Christmas. We celebrate the specific ways that we celebrate. But the, the aspect of Christmas that I want to talk about tonight is this on to. What, what do we move on to after Christmas? After it's over, what do we go on to? Because it's inevitable that we go on to something, right? I mean, it's even true in the Christmas story. No one stayed in Bethlehem. No one. No one stayed in Bethlehem. Everyone left. Mary, Joseph, Jesus, the shepherds, the wise men. Everybody left Bethlehem. And so we know that there are things in our lives that are going to require us to go on to something else. And uh, we know we've done a good job of coming into Christmas, and and today and tomorrow and the rest of this week we'll celebrate going through Christmas. But I want us to just ponder just for a moment what we're going to go on to. And I really would like to challenge us in three ways tonight, and simply in three ways. And the first way uh, my family was so gracious to model for you, if you truly, if we truly, internalize Christmas. If we truly realize what we were coming into and what we're going to walk through, the, the onto part would be thankfulness. I mean, if we truly internalize it, if we truly realize what Christmas is all about, wouldn't we be demonstrating thankfulness? And so as you came in this evening on your seat, was a thank you card, the very thank you cards that we were using up here. Wouldn't you love to know what these clowns are writing up here? We could sell those too. Um, the, the, we were trying to make each other laugh with what we were writing. Uh, and so, um, you know, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if we each could write a thank you card to Jesus. Now, obviously, when you have a party, it's normally the recipient of the gifts that receive that once the, is prompted to write the thank you card. But, but at this party, the, the recipient of the party, the, the one that was the party was being thrown for, is the one that we ought to be writing thank you cards to. And, and I wonder if between now, and I know it's late, but at 6 o'clock it was a little earlier, but between now and at some point in your celebration of Christmas, I don't know if that's with your spouse tomorrow at 11 or if it's with the extended family tomorrow evening at 6, between now and then, could you take some time and just write out that thank you card to Jesus? And really what it, you saw, it says thank you on the outside and inside it says dear Jesus. If you had to write a thank you card to Jesus, what could you and would you say? What, what does he mean? What, what has it meant to you to come into and through Christmas? I challenge you to write that out and, and share it with your spouse or share it with your family or, and read it with your family as part of your wonderful celebration tomorrow. Or maybe just sit it somewhere in your Bible or along your nightstand as a reminder that, that Christmas is something that we not only go into and through, but it is something that we have to go on to. It is something that we need to remember as we go through. The second thing I want to say about going on to Christmas is that we need to bring Jesus to someone. We need to take Jesus with us. And, and as I mentioned earlier, that no one stayed in Bethlehem. Actually, we, we know by the story that we read tonight that the first place that Mary and Joseph and Jesus actually go to is Egypt. See, they, they hear that Herod is after them. The, the angel comes to Joseph and says, listen, it's not safe for you and your family to be here. You need to go on to Egypt where you can be safe from Herod, and I'll let you know when Herod dies. And then after Herod dies, they get word that they might be able to come back, but on their way back, they realize that Herod's son is now ruling, and it's not safe to come back to Bethlehem, and so they end up at Nazareth. And as I thought about that this week, 
I realized that Bethlehem represents celebration. And Christmas is a celebration as we see it, right? Coming into it and through it. But we don't really live at parties. We don't really live at celebrations. We live in real life or we live in trials. And so I want you to know that the Jesus that we celebrate at Bethlehem is willing to go with you to your Egypt. You're willing to go with you in your trials. So we don't live in Bethlehem. We don't live in celebrations. We don't live at parties. Parties are special because they're unique. But we sometimes come into trials. And other times we just have normal life, which would be represented by Nazareth. See, they ended up settling in Nazareth, and that's why he's called Jesus of Nazareth. Because that's where he lived. That's where he did normal life. And so I want to challenge us as we go on to something, we're going to go on to normal life. We're going to go on to trials. I don't know, maybe when you get home tonight, you'll be coming into Egypt. There'll be some trial that you have to deal with. And I want you to know that even though we're coming into Christmas and then we'll celebrate and go through Christmas, you can also go on to Christmas. You can take Jesus with you. And then thirdly, what we go on to is this idea of keeping our concentration and our celebration on Jesus. One of the things I love about the story we read, the part of the story we read with the shepherds and Mary, is when the shepherds show up, the amount of time that it's recorded that they're actually with Jesus is pretty small because as soon as they see him, immediately the scriptures say that they, got, they went out and began to spread the word about Jesus. And the next verse, after it says that the shepherds spread the word about Jesus, it says that Mary pondered all of these things in her heart. And so you have on one hand, Mary pondering all the things and concentrating on all the things that she experienced with Jesus at Christmas. Then you also have the shepherds celebrating all that they experienced with Jesus. And so I felt like those three things, thank you cards and taking and bringing Jesus into Egypt in our Nazareth and then keeping our concentration and our celebration on Jesus, how Mary and the shepherds did it, was represented by the three things that we'll do tonight and to close this service. The first is the thank you card. I want to challenge you to fill that out and think about that. The second is the lighting of the candle. So when we light these candles here in just a couple of minutes, we are symbolizing that we will take this light into and onto other places. We're going to take the light of Jesus onto something else, not only through Christmas, but onto something else. And then this idea of concentrating or celebrating Jesus as Mary and the shepherds did, that's represented by communion. When we come to the communion table, What are we doing? We're concentrating on what Jesus did for us. And we're celebrating what he did for us. That's the beautiful thing about communion. In some ways, it's one of the saddest things in all of Christendom. (laughs) It's like, wow, man, the blood. Like, you ever think about that? Like, we're drinking his blood. Like, what? But But on the other hand, it's an amazing triumphal story. The reason why we're remembering his death and his life and death is because he's alive, because he's resurrected. And so I wonder, as we look at this idea of not really ever being able to stay in our bow tie and our white Adidas, I'm going to have to wear regular shoes next week, and I'm not going to have a bow tie on. I'm going to go on to regular life in Nazareth, or I'm going to face some trials in Egypt. I'm not going to be able to stay in the Bethlehem celebration. We're not going to be able to stay in the party. Next week we start a new sermon series. But I wonder tonight if we could make those three commitments. Thank you, light the candle, and receive communion. Uh, I believe that's what it means to go on to from Christmas. Thank you.